Hi, my name is Emily Weber and I'm a machine learning specialist at Amazon Web Services. Today we're going to learn about hyperparameter tuning, which is also known as automatic model tuning. This is your deep dive. So first, we're going to quickly recap on training jobs. So if you remember from our previous videos, uh, we, we introduced training jobs, right? It starts off with most commonly your notebook instance. You got your EC2 instance that's situated on top of your EBS volume. And then in common practices, we'll call model.fit, right? And when we call model.fit, SageMaker is going to shoot our data out to an S3 bucket. Uh, either we're going to do this ourselves or SageMaker is going to copy it over for us. Uh, after that, um, SageMaker is going to spin up additional EC2 instances. And remember, this is an ephemeral cluster that is dedicated not just to us, but to this specific model. And so this ephemeral cluster comes online. Uh, additionally, we're going to have our image living in an elastic container registry, right? That's the actual code that's going to both train and run inference on your model. So you've got your ECR registry. SageMaker will copy that image onto that cluster, right? And so that's either one or a number of Docker containers that are copied onto those instances. And this process is going to train. After that training has finished, SageMaker is going to write the trained model back to S3, right? And so you've got that model artifact that's living in your S3 bucket. And best of all is after that model has finished training down to the second, that process comes down, right? And so that's why we love SageMaker training jobs is because it's scalable and cost efficient. But wait, what's a tuning job, right? That's what we're here to learn about. Let's check it out. Uh, so hyperparameter tuning jobs. Let's, let's really own that term. Let's really understand what's going on here. So when we're developing a hyperparameter tuning job, again, most commonly we'll start with the notebook instance, right? And we're getting everything configured. We'll create what's called a tuner and then we'll call tuner.fit. Similar flow here, SageMaker is going to copy our data out to S3, or we can push it over, either or. After that, we're going to think about model training in terms of rounds. Actually, we're going to have multiple rounds that we're going to walk through. For the first round, SageMaker is going to spin up three different versions of our model. Right, and three, we can specify that, but we're gonna get three different hyperparameter settings. And those are all gonna live as separate training jobs. Uh, the the hyperparameter tuner is actually operating as an orchestrator. So it's gonna be running a large number of sub training jobs. And so those three training jobs are gonna run. Again, same data, same model, just different settings of the hyperparameters. That process is gonna train. After that's finished, the results from that are going to be pulled into a Bayesian optimizer. And so that Bayesian optimizer is coming out of the Amazon Labs. You can absolutely read a couple white papers to walk you through how we're thinking about it. And so that is basically pulling in the objective performance of that model, right? So if we're interested in AUC, uh, for example, if we're operating under class imbalance or if we're interested in precision or recall or accuracy or objective metric star, uh, you can plug that into the Bayesian optimizer. So that's round one. Round two is going to start with the Bayesian optimizer, right? It's cognizant. It's knowledgeable about what happened in the last round. It's going to look at that objective criteria, again, for example, AUC. And then the optimizer is going to reinitialize three more models, right? And these are different hyperparameter settings. Right, so not just different from each other, but different from those first three models that we ran. And this is round two, right? And so round two is reinitializing those three separate models. And so at this point, we've trained six separate models all on different hyperparameters to identify the best one. And so in total, we're going to walk through a large number of jobs, right? And when you get to the end of this, we'll actually get a graph that's going to help us analyze it. So down on that x-axis, right, we have time in seconds. Y-axis, that's just your AUC. And again, you can customize that AUC based on the objective metric that you're trying to optimize. And so for that first period, SageMaker is initializing those three training jobs, again, under one umbrella tuning job. We're going to pull that objective criteria out. So we're looking at that AUC. And then we're going to reinitialize three more models, right? And hopefully that maximum AUC is going to be slightly higher 
for each period. But the Bayesian optimizer, it, it has a little front right. It's gonna be able to both explore and maximize based on what it's learned. Uh, and so it's gonna be looking through multiple areas in the hypothesis space until it ultimately finds the best model. And so that's how we actually get to those seven full rounds, right? So in, in this case, we actually trained 20 models total and found the, the ultimate best one. And so how do we set up a hyperparameter tuning job? Well, the good news is that it's easy to do. Might sound scary, but it's actually pretty accessible. Um, so the first thing we're gonna need is that objective metric, right? And that's gonna be AUC on your validation data. That's your binary classification accuracy. That's your precision. That's your recall. Um, there, there's a lot of content out there for evaluating machine learning models. And so you wanna pick one and then plug that into your tuner. The second thing you need to identify are the actual hyperparameters and the ranges that you want to tune. So in the case of XGBoost, a hyperparameter might be the maximum depth to your tree. In the case of a deep learning model, it might be the actual learning rate. And then for all of those hyperparameters that you pick, you just want to check the ranges on those. So if you're doing maximum depth for your trees, you might be going from a maximum depth of one out to say 10, 15, or 20. And again, each of those is gonna slightly modify the performance of that model. The last thing you need to set up are really just the job specs. So you wanna be thinking about the total number of jobs you wanna run against the number of jobs you're gonna run in parallel, right? So periods of time. And so the good news is that you can absolutely use hyperparameter tuning with your own model, right? So you can, first off, you can use hyperparameter tuning with those built-in algorithms. Um, again, the 17 built-in algorithms that come off the shelf with SageMaker, those are absolutely available to perform hyperparameter tuning on. Uh, but for both bringing your own model in Docker and with bringing your own model in the script mode, you can utilize the hyperparameter tuner in a fully customizable manner. So we're gonna walk through how to set that up. So really what we need to set up is just a single dictionary, right? That's one JSON object that's called your hyperparameters. Uh, in this case, we're looking at batch size, data augmentation, learning rate. So we're picking again, those hyperparameters, and then we're thinking about what the ranges in the initial settings are gonna be. And so also if you're thinking, well, hey, I really like the tuner, but I'm not trying to wait for you know seven rounds. I actually want all those jobs tuned at the same time. And so the good news for you is that we have random search. So the Bayesian optimizer over there on the left-hand side, that's gonna be running through periods, right? And so you have to wait until that entire process is finished or until the performance on your model has stopped increasing, right? You can actually enable early stopping. But so the Bayesian search is gonna take some period in time and that's because for each round, it's explicitly getting more intelligent, right? It's utilizing that Bayesian search. But over there on the right-hand side, you've also got random search. And so random search is gonna unsurprisingly use random, right? So it's randomly picking the hyperparameters. Uh, but the cool thing is that it's gonna be able to do that all at the same time, right? So if you've got a use case where you need to literally find the best model and you have 30 minutes to do it, right? Or maybe you have less than that, maybe you've got 10 minutes. And so each of your models can train within 10 minutes, but you actually wanna test out 50 different hyperparameter settings, random search is gonna be the method to use for that. And so the way you specify that is, is actually pretty accessible, right? So on the right-hand side, that's setting up a tuner, right? That's just a call from the hyperparameter tuner. Uh, we're gonna plug in our SageMaker estimator. We've got that objective metric name. We've got the hyperparameter ranges, the maximum number of jobs, right? So that's 20 jobs and then the max parallel jobs. And you can just switch out your strategy. Um, so you can just change your strategy to random versus the default. And so again, early stopping, you can absolutely uh, stop a model early if it is not getting better. Uh, in this case, we're setting up a tuner. That is an image classification tuner. Uh, still has that objective metric along with the hyperparameter ranges. Uh, and what here we're gonna do is actually enable auto early stopping. So you can just set that auto uh, key. And basically what it's gonna do is look at uh, a number of jobs that you've ran previously, and it's going to evaluate that objective metric. And if you're telling it to maximize, then the early stopping is gonna say, well, hey, if that model hasn't increased within a certain number of periods, then I definitely wanna cut off that job. And so that's a way that you can both save money and get better models because it's gonna prevent your models from overfitting. And also is you can maximize efficiency across tuning jobs by utilizing warm start, right? So let's say I am interested in training a model and what I want to do is first run a parent tuning job. 
But then after that parent tuning job has completed, let's say I still need to train my models, right? Because my objective performance just isn't quite there yet. Rather than starting from scratch, you can actually inherit that parent tuning job. And that parent tuning job is gonna look at everything that that Bayesian optimizer found in the first case, and then it's gonna apply that to the new tuning job. So in the case of Warm Start, you're still gonna need an identical algorithm and identical data, right? So both of those need to be the same. So that means in the new case, when you're trying it out, if you took the log, right, or did some new scaling, you want to set up a separate tuning job for that, right? But your parents um, will be applied on new tuning jobs that are still using that original ETL process. However, you can also set up transfer learning, right? So if you are running a parent tuning job and then you want to set up a child tuning job, but you want to add more data, right? Because maybe you got additional data sets or maybe you did a different ETL strategy, but you still want to leverage those previous jobs that you ran. So today in Amazon SageMaker, you can leverage transfer learning as it's called, right? In order to pick up where a previous parent tuning job left off and apply that to a new uh, child tuning job, leveraging more data, which is pretty awesome. And then we can also compare results across tuning jobs, right? So that parent child is gonna be really great at letting us set up kind of a single flow where we're thinking about one model and helping it get better and better over time. But let's say you've been working on a project for a month, maybe a couple weeks, and you just wanna pull the results from all of your models, right? So today you can use SageMaker Search in order to do that. This process is basically setting that up. Um, this is looking at an S3 URL. Right. So as you remember in SageMaker, we need to supply an S3 location uh, for our data in order to run on SageMaker. And so SageMaker search is going to look at the S3 URIs of all of our training jobs and it's gonna see which ones have the word that we are trying to identify within that S3 URI, and then it's gonna search for it. Uh, you can look for where training jobs have completed uh, versus not completed, and then you can also pull uh, based on your, your uh, descending objective criteria, right? So you can get the best performing models utilizing SageMaker Search. Okay, let's check out an example. All right, so over here, uh, this is our SageMaker notebook. And just to orient you here, right, this is the AWS console. This is Amazon SageMaker. Uh, these are notebook instances. This is one I have online. And then we're going to jump over to that open Jupyter here. And that's going to take us to this location. And so this is our, this is our Jupyter home base. All right, so let's check out this first one. So this is image classification, warm start. And so this notebook is available in the SageMaker examples, right? All of the demos that we're gonna be looking at are available publicly, so you can always check them out. And then let's, let's just give this a click. All right, so automatic model tuning. Here we go, so this is an end-to-end -end example uh, that's gonna let us perform uh, image classification. So this should feel pretty familiar, right? We're importing SageMaker, we've got our execution role, uh, we've got our default buckets, okay? Uh, we're going to set up our client here using Boto3, and then we're going to get the image, right? That's that get image URI function that takes the name uh, of the built-in algorithm that we're going to be leveraging here. All right, uh, pretty common flow. We're going to download some data. Um, so this is from MXNet, right? And we're just going to be downloading that uh, using URL lib in Python. Uh, then we have multiple channels here, right? That's our train and validation channel. And then this is gonna use that AWS CLI, right? So that's using AWS S3 copy from our local uh, notebook instance to our S3 bucket. There we go. And then we're gonna set up our output location because again, everything's gonna go back to into S3. Uh, and so we've got our output location. Uh, we've got an S3 input here. And so the S3 input is really combining all of those steps. Um, that's gonna let us specify a, a few other pieces there. Then let's set up the hyperparameter tuning job. So this is a deep learning model, and in particular, this is an image classification model. So there are a couple hyperparameters that we know right off the bat are gonna be really key here. Uh, but let's start with just the estimator, right? So we'll set up the estimator. We've got our training image, and again, that's just the code for the algorithm, SageMaker role. Uh, that's our resource config, right? So that's one P3, two XL. 
S3 output pass, Sage micro session, all looking good. Uh, now we're gonna set the hyperparameters. So this uh, right here, this is the number of layers that are in our deep learning model. Image shape, right? So those are the, the channels, that's RGB, that's our pixel uh, height and width. Uh, we're gonna be identifying 257 different classes, so we'll specify that here. Uh, we've got the, the number of samples in our training data set, so just over 150,000. Uh, mini batch size, right? If you've, if you've ever struggled as I have, um, you'll, you'll figure out that your mini batch size does need to be smaller than the number of training samples you're, you're utilizing, that, that's key. Uh, number of epochs, right? So that's our full passes through the data set. Uh, SGD, right? That's our gradient descent optimizer, and on we go. All right, so now we're gonna set up the hyperparameter tuner. Uh, so first off, we're going to import a few things from SageMaker. Right? We've got the integer parameters, categorical, continuous, and hyperparameter tuner. So all those things we need. And here are the ranges, right? So that's, that's that one dictionary um, where we have three hyperparameters we're evaluating. Uh, we know that they are continuous parameters, and then we have the ranges. Uh, right down here, that's our objective metric name. Uh, and if you're thinking, well, how do I pick an objective metric? Um, first off, you'll probably have a personal preference. And if you've got a preference, you can write your own when you're bringing your own model. Uh, but for the built-ins, you can just select it from the documentation. Uh, then we've got the hyperparameter tuner, right? And that's gonna take our estimator, objective metric name, ranges, trying to maximize, because in this case, we're looking at accuracy. Uh, maximum is gonna be doing five jobs and we're looking at two per parallel. Okay, then we'll call tuner.fit. And that's tricking, taking our train and validation channels, right? S3 input train, S3 input validation. Okay, and so uh, fortunately, I already ran this job. And so when that job finishes, we'll pull that name in. And so that, that's right down here. Um, so the image classification project, uh, we'll, we'll pull that in. Uh, and then um, we're going to create a data frame uh, on the res those results. And so these are the uh, five jobs that we ran previously. Uh, pretty low objective metrics, right? But that was a low epoch number. So this is, this is purposes of a demo. Uh, different learning rates here, different momentums, different weight decays. All right, and so now we're gonna plot this. And so here we've got two models. Right? And then for the next period, we ran a few more models and that objective metric went up considerably. Right? Uh, even though it's, it's a pretty small scale, so the, the, the zoom definitely makes it seem a little bit bigger, but it's still, still pretty helpful. We'll take everything we can get. All right, and so now we're gonna set up using that warm start config, right? So here's the parent tuning job name and here's the warm start config. So again, that's just an import from the SageMaker SDK. Uh, we've got our identical, identical data and algorithm Right? And then that takes the parent tuning job name uh, for this one. And then we're gonna set this up, right? Just as a normal hyperparameter tuner uh, with everything else pretty comparable. Uh, and there we go. And the warm start config has been applied, right? So now we know that this is gonna be utilizing everything that our model just learned in that previous tuning job. And so there we go. Uh, you can keep walking through this example. It's gonna get you the best model and then ultimately uh, help you set this up utilizing transfer learning as well. So let's, let's switch back. So some pro tips, right? Some, some, some tricks of the trade here. Uh, it is definitely helpful to have one S3 bucket per project that you are working on. Uh, the reason being, if you have one S3 bucket dedicated to your project, it is a million times easier to search for all of the models that are associated with that project, right? Just pull it in through SageMaker search based on that S3 URI. Uh, you can certainly modify SageMaker search utilizing tags. Uh, it's just there's less work when it's already there and you didn't have to add the tags. I mean, we like that. Uh, second pro tip is that tuning jobs are super parallelizable. Right, so in addition to one tuning job acting as an orchestrator, right, where that's gonna be running 20 jobs, for example, with three at a time, there's no reason why you can't run multiple tuning jobs at a single time, right? So if you're trying to tune a linear model, also trying to tune an XGBoost, also trying to tune K nearest neighbors, you can run all three of those tuning jobs literally at the same time. And that's because there's no dependency between those nodes, right? They're all just operating. Uh, and then the last pro tip for you is obviously utilizing warm start, right? If you previously learned about how your model is operating, you definitely wanna pull that back in for the next time you run your tuning job.
And so with that, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Emily Weber. I'm a machine learning specialist at Amazon Web Services, and I'm happy to uh, talk with you today about automatic model tuning and uh, hyperparameter tuning on Amazon SageMaker. Thank you.